So last night, Jess and I got to watching some of our old collabs together. There are many of them, and the views on them are, are mad. And the two of us were like, did we ever used to get that many views? You don't remember that. Never. We have no memory of getting Even some of, of the videos, we've no views. memory of seeing the videos. We did a blindfolded makeup challenge, and neither of us have any recollection of ever filming that video. I didn't even know it was on the internet. <laughs> It got us reflecting on YouTube and how it's changed and how our viewing habits have changed and your viewing habits and our audiences and just so much, so much of that kind of thing. So we thought we'd... You have to say hi, beautiful friends. Hello, beautiful friends, and <laughs> welcome, welcome back. back. So I am back <laughs> with my sister today, your favourite, Melanie Murphy, and we said we're going to sit down... <laughs> Yeah. Every collab me Mel to do, she has to do something weird with her hands. So when I started YouTube, I was 18 years of age. So I am now 24. So that is a huge difference in who you are as a person, how much you grow and mature and come into yourself. So the people who followed me and the kinds of videos I used to make were very different, different yeah. to what I make now. But not so much different, but it's more so who you were as a person. Yeah, I'm completely different like I'm 33 and I was 23 when I started YouTube we were watching our playlist vlog last night and I don't recognize either of them girls no they look like strangers to me we talked different we carried ourselves different I'm just popping in to thank the sponsor of today's video which is Fabletics which I thought was very fitting considering we were talking about how much YouTube has changed over the years and our journey with it and I have now been a brand ambassador for Fabletics for the last two and a half years so since I even started working with Fabletics so much has changed on the internet as summer is now coming to an end we are all returning back to our routines so in this month's selection we have some cute activewear sets but also loungewear because we are finally back in tracksuit season and I have never been so goddamn happy about it in my life. Autumn winter is my favourite time for fashion clothes. I just love being comfy and cozy. So for the month of September, you can get any two trousers for £24 and up to 80% off all single items on site. Fabletics have the most high quality clothes for the most affordable prices. So I will leave a little link down below so you can go over, have a little look, have a little shop, maybe treat yourself to some cozy clothes for the cozy ones that are coming. Their tracksuits and loungewear sets are what I live in on a day-to-day -day basis. It's what I'm always wearing when I'm at home, bopping around the house. They're just so comfortable and so soft, such high quality. Like, as I've said, I've had my Fabletics for over two and a half years now and the ones I got the first month back in January 2020, I still wear them, they're still as good as new, I've washed them so many times, they hold up so well. I just cannot stress how much I love Fabletics as a general brand. I have bought from all other activewear brands over the years and I really struggle to see how what I'm paying for other brands is worth the quality of the item I get. Whereas with Fabletics, they really are delivering that high quality but for a price that we can all afford and I just bloody love that about them and the fact that they're always bringing out so many different styles, like even this red set, is a literal dream. They really do consider every body and every body type and they have something that we're all gonna feel comfortable in but my favorite style of leggings are the Seamless Motion 365 and the Trinity. They're always the ones that I will reach for. Don't forget there is a link down below where you can get any two trousers for 24 pounds and up to 80% off all single items but thank you so much Fabletics. You have such a special place in my heart and you forever, forever will. Okay, let's get back to the video. I suppose I'm just a lot more, I don't know, subdued. I don't know if I, I don't know. I, I don't know how to kind of be like, Hey, like YouTube entertainer anymore. And Do it used to come very naturally to us. I feel like, <laughs> because I couldn't believe how much energy I used to have. <laughs> And I was like, I'm like so boring now. Like, <laughs> where is your energy, Jessica? I wonder, is it? We used to be funny. Like, we were actually laughing at our own videos last night. And then we clicked on to recent videos. And you're just like, <gasps> boring. Like, Jesus, this is so shit. Fest. <laughs> this is shit. And I don't know what it is. And I think, I don't know. I suppose, I think everything changed during the pandemic. That's yes. around when TikTok took off and people started becoming acclimatized to shorter videos. And I feel and like there was a lot of trauma very, like, for people yeah. throughout the pandemic. Well, for me, yeah. I know I could say there is. And yeah. I feel like that's when I noticed a real change in myself even. Mm. Like if I go through my pandemic videos, it's like as they go oh on, God, the energy same. goes. Same, and it's not come back. And it's, it's so sad. It's, sad. it's like a battery, a phone battery that's sitting on 13%. <laughs> that's where we're at right now, kind of. That's really sad and that's true. We never, 
like you didn't say that before and you're after like making me sad no, now never. that's really true and then as you say for, <laughs> I kind of get upset like no, no no I don't want to I don't want to as you say I then crying online everyone's I literally cry in every video I do with you nearly now <laughs> That also follows through with the audience because everyone who watches all us gone through that, went yeah. through the pandemic as well. So it's affected how we... And what you want to watch, I suppose, as well. Yeah. You know, the kinds of stuff that the algorithm pushes now is very... I don't know. I think a lot of people got very used to watching really serious and heavy stuff. Kind of dramatic stuff. Not gossip. What's the word? Really shocking stuff, I suppose, was like all doing yeah. really well during the pandemic and... I think it's like it was giving people little adrenaline boosts because you're like, you're just sitting there and then something mad happens and it's like, oh. Because <laughs> you weren't getting it from anywhere. I feel alive <laughs> for a minute. Yeah. And so I think like the like vlogs just kind of online just took a little bit of a backseat. And like I noticed across the board, vlogs generally are not nearly as popular a category as they were no. back in the day. But we, we never just did like, like daily vlogs. I mean, like even like a vlog of just like you sitting chatting about a subject, that's still a vlog. Yeah, I feel like it's um, really moved into very fast paced editing and kind high of high production a like, lot like going very, on because it's trying to compete like obviously with tiktok it's so much going on and lily pebbles made this point in a video um where with tiktok you have to be completely engaged while even though you yeah. think it's like an easier form of entertainment and you're like oh i don't have to be as fully plugged in with tiktok i can just like you know and but you're having to look at the screen constantly or you miss what's going on whereas with youtube it's always been very much a thing where you can play it in the background and you can yeah. kind of just look at it the do time. something else. and that's what we both always liked watching and making yeah like being the background voice and i have found since tiktok has come around if i sit on tiktok for an hour I get really overwhelmed because mm, there's so, so much, much information, information coming at me at once. But as you say, I can't multitask. Like yeah. whenever I'm watching a YouTube video, for the most part, I'll play it and I'll be washing the dishes, I'll be cleaning the house, I'll be doing the laundry. So it's yeah. like you feel like you've got a friend there with you, but you are also feeling productive. So you're yeah. not kind of stuck in your own head with your own thoughts kind of a thing. It's still <clears> what <throat> I love. It's I love watching that kind of stuff It's still. my favourite. But people don't make it as much anymore because it doesn't do as well so my subscription box is often like really lacking and i'm just scrolling and scrolling and it's all can't these like anything. it's all these like thumbnails and like you know this mad thing's happening oh, i can't believe this person said this and it's just all like it's so extreme and dramatic yeah, constantly and i just want a wholesome little video watching someone live their life a different life to mine it's just interests me and someone talking about a subject like maybe they don't have the same opinions on me at all as me at all but i just like hearing people speak i feel that's another thing with tiktok versus youtube like you can give so much more context on youtube like the longest mm. video you can make on tiktok is three minutes yeah what are you meant to say oh i can't listen to a three minute tiktok though but you know what i mean <laughs> you know what i mean i'm just like i don't have the energy i don't have the attention span for this so i'm just so unless like, it's like get to the point <laughs> <laughs> but with YouTube, that hasn't affected me as much. But I wonder, like, comment down below, has yeah. that affected your viewing on YouTube? I've seen some YouTubers talk about this recently. Like, people who, re like, Tiffany was, like, on her stories, was like, I didn't want to get TikTok because I didn't want to get so sucked into it. But she was like, it's become, like, my favorite, my go-to platform. And it's like, she didn't want that to happen kind of thing. And I'd be really interested to know how your viewing habits have changed in mm. recent times especially since the pandemic i do wonder as well since tiktok came along are people less interested in longer form videos like me and you would often do 30 40 minute vlogs but i personally love that because if there's somebody that i enjoy watching i like people for who they are not yeah. what they make normally and if it's a 40 minute video and i don't have time for it i'll watch 20 minutes and 20 minutes it's less about that for me and it's more like I want to, a video to watch during this task, like having a meal or folding clothes or having a bath or whatever. And if I have to look for a new video after five or 10 minutes, I'm just like, oh, I just want to relax and listen to something that's on go You know what I mean? You like want to a show. Commit to, yeah, yeah. Like, a, like a Netflix show. Like a much lower produced Netflix <laughs> show. And People be like, she's comparing her videos to, to Netflix. Netflix. <laughs> Here we go. Um, she's off. <laughs> She's off on one. <laughs> the algorithm has changed so much multiple times in our like YouTube careers, I suppose. And it's something we have to be, it's not something you guys usually like 
are aware of or probably care much about but when you're a creator and you log in and it's like even you have the whole YouTube studio and it's like <sighs> this new video is doing terribly your last video did way better it, it gives you a mark out of 10 and if your video is doing 9 or 10 out of 10 compared to your most recent 10 videos you're just like it oh, really affects I'm how you feel yeah it and does recently I did a video I was really proud of it was like 10 tools I used to manage my anxiety and I was so proud she of it she was texting me about it being like oh this is such a good video I'm like I, I, I'm really I really think it will help people and, and stuff and then she was like <laughs> YouTube's just not showing it to anyone and if you know what I mean it it's did like, the worst a video has probably ever done for me mm. and I'm just like it's so demotivating when that happens but why that is is that basically the title and thumbnail are extremely important but so is the first 30 seconds YouTube mm. actually has this thing about like when you're in the YouTube studio about how well your video has done in its first 30 seconds or how many people are still watching after 30 seconds. And that is definitely a new thing like since the whole TikTok, like yeah. people got used to 10, 30 second, you know, really oh, short yeah. videos. So I think it became a thing with YouTube where if people were clicking in and very quickly clicking out, they just don't show it to anyone. Um, so then if you're the type of person who usually takes a little while to get into a video and to warm up and to kind of, you have an intro and you might, you know, just give someone an update about something in your life and you're a very chatty person. That used to do really well and now Not YouTube anymore. hates that. So even say it shows it to like, I don't know, say the first hundred people that watch your video and they're not the type of people to like want to sit through that. Then YouTube takes that as a sign as like, this is a terrible video and we're not going to show it to anyone. And, and we're going to make sure you know about it. Yeah, we're going to rank you and tell you that you're doing a terrible job. And it's like, it's so hard. And when I look at my homepage sometimes, sometimes they nail it and they like recommend a video that I, and I, I found a, a YouTuber recently, like interior design type stuff she does and I love her channel. But most of the time it's like recommending me stuff. I'm just like not, I don't care like at all about the channel. Yeah. They care more about the, the, not necessarily viral, but like I don't think the word viral even means anything anymore. I feel like <laughs> now with YouTube. Big views. Yeah, everyone comes from like big views. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, everyone's famous. Like no one's famous anymore because everyone is. Like remember back in the day when it was just like Zoella and Tanya Byrne? It was just yeah. a group of people who were like celebrities in a sense YouTubers, because they were yeah. so big. But like look back at our old videos. Like we used to get some of our videos are like two hundred thousand. Yeah, but we don't 000. remember getting. I don't. I was like, <laughs> no. What? But sure, we used to go to YouTube conventions and like I've been on stage with like Dan and Phil and like Thomas Sanders and all these people and like I was always like, why am I here? I always felt like I didn't deserve it and I I was always like why how did I get to be but when you look this? back now but when I look back now I was doing really well and I was one of the few YouTube especially in Ireland England, oh yeah what we were we were definitely in that middle ground but well, you were we one weren't of the, the top you were one of the top you no were. I was no no I think I was always like a mid-range YouTuber like mid successful you know like I feel like but the there top wasn't people, that many people in Ireland doing it at that time no but in England there was and yeah. my audience was always UK and I think for me it was like the top people were like a few million subs and then there was like us like middle people were kind of like like between 500,000 and a million subs and then there were always people who were like 100 to 200,000 but they were Me. still very <laughs> successful back in the day so you used to get like we'd be all you remember what we were like even on on the backstage like with Dodie when she was doing her gig and all those memories are so amazing but like we'd have meet and greets and we'd be flown to like America and all this that and the other for these things they don't, all that stuff is so different now because those events are so much about TikTok people. Yeah, like, there's like talk fest now. It's like yeah. no longer like a YouTube thing. Another thing with YouTube though, with the algorithm, like how it works, and this is what's really annoying because I feel like YouTube doesn't really want you making content for your audience. It's more so just yeah. about whoever they can grab you know just yeah. randomers which makes it a lot harder because it serves out a lot of old content have you noticed that yeah like you see a lot I'm of constantly getting old videos like in your home six page. years old yes and i'm just like i don't care yeah <laughs> it's not relevant um. but now do you know the way how it does it so if we upload when we upload this video it will push it to ten thousand subscribers of ours yeah and depending a batch. on how many of you guys watch it it will depend on if they send it out to the next batch right. and the it's next not batch, even watching it's like comments and likes and and that as well but it's also how quickly you click it after yes. you see it so that's why titles and thumbnails are so important and like 
I just don't do clickbait. Like I, I've, I've dabbled with it a couple of times in my YouTube, like where I put like a title where I'm like, oh yeah, that's like, people will, will click that. Mm. But I still try and make sure that it is something that's talked about or shown or whatever in the yeah. video. I've never done what like a lot of people do where they genuinely put like a totally- Has nothing to do with bullshit. it. Like we'll probably pick a clickbait title for this video just as an experiment. Yeah. We should. Yeah. We, so we, let's we see what it is. We don't do it. Like we, yeah. I'm let's, the same let's with you. Let's do it. I've <laughs> it a couple times but like you it's been relevant to what is happening in the video but anytime I have done it a couple times Probably over works. the years people got really annoyed oh yeah yeah, yeah. like and that I don't but like that, that. I, I get I'm, annoyed as so well so do I so that's, so that's I think why you don't do we it we don't do it so like my videos are like these really boring like I ha oh my god like my vlogs I'll just put like random words that are related to things that happened in the vlog and then like you know my my house renovation series it's like from house to home episode five like you know but it's like the algorithm the doesn't I like. care i like them videos like i often my audience like those videos but youtube doesn't YouTube yeah that's doesn't want to show them it's like the people who genuinely enjoy your content will always watch them but they're not going to show them to anyone else but like, my, my new youtube video has hundreds and hundreds of comments and it's still like on my little grading system seven <laughs> out of ten you're doing a shit job i know and but yeah i don't know it's like i i did originally start youtube because i well the, the main reason was i was really really bad at public speaking and in my degree i needed to be you know confident and stuff and i remember a youtuber saying that youtube made her really confident in public speaking so that was one it worked i want yeah definitely worked i was so <laughs> watch shy. her first video you probably don't, don't have it, it up i don't anymore. even think i have it up i have early ones up though and I'm it's very, ingrained in my head you're just <laughs> i'm so awkward and shy and basically i wanted to connect with people on stuff I was interested in. I loved the thought of being part of that community because I was obsessed with it at the time, but it was not really like a thing that people did as a job. It wasn't like a big career thing. And you wanted to do YouTube even before me. Yeah. You were like 14 and people you wanted to do YouTube believe channel. People don't believe Yeah, no, she did. She used to say it to me all the time and I started a channel because I was older. She had to kind of wait until she was like 18 just because it was, I don't know, I think YouTube still is like not a great place for te teenagers. Like you can't no. really understand what you're getting into when I also did you wanted to wait until you were finished school the balls to do it yeah while I was in school and that's why I want to start too because I came from such a small town mm. a small school and I didn't have really any friends at the time so I wanted to connect with people and a lot of the things that I was interested in I didn't have people to talk about them with in my life yeah. so I'm also very introverted as a lot of you yeah. guys know so it was just it was perfect for you and and I was obsessed with it from literally the day the day you started. started yeah and I, I that was such an exciting time like to remember like teaching you how to edit videos and all that and you were like it was just so exciting yeah. and yeah we both kind of our channels grew quite quickly together because we were making stuff together and we just had this dynamic and I think that dynamic has changed because it used to be like teenage versus 20 something. We were young and free. And, and <laughs> everything's, you know, we're a lot more similar now than we are different, I think. Yeah. And so there's less of a, like, a thing, a theme, you know, that's like unique. And I think where I'm at with it is like, so it became a job. Obviously it became a job. It became a very fun job. But then as the years went on, I just felt less fulfilled by it as a job because we always talked, like our thing was like talking about, you know, taboo things or, um, yeah. you know, just even, even just stuff like the makeup y stuff that we used to do. So, like, mine was always with a like acne focus because I had really bad skin and um, there was hardly anyone with bad skin showing their skin and talking about like acne products or acne makeup and so I spoke a lot about was, mental health yeah like you were talking a lot about mental health stuff and like I, I did share like certain mental health things but like we wanted to talk about stuff that not enough people especially in our country talked about we yeah. really wanted to carve out a space that was like a safe space to talk about things but now everyone does talk about those things which is brilliant yes. but it also means that there's just less of an interest in that kind of content from us yeah you know so it kind of leaves you in a space where it's like you know you don't want to overshare too much of your personal life there's you want to hold back some stuff because 
I don't know, I used to share everything when I had Snapchat. Oh my God. Like I oh my to- God, <laughs> yesterday we were watching one of our old videos and in it I said, so we have questions from Snapchat, Twitter and Instagram. Oh, Snapchat she couldn't breathe for laughing. She was like crying laughing. Like she was like, Twitter? Like who gives a fuck about Twitter anymore? <laughs> like asking for questions on Twitter. It just shows how much the times have changed. Jeez. Being completely honest, I find the job of posting YouTube content a lot less fulfilling for multiple reasons like what you put into it in terms of like hours of editing and like just I don't know coming up with video ideas and even a very simple video that you guys would think is like extremely simple like can take like a vlog or like you know like you did your moving in series and like I've been doing yes. like they're so, so simple to watch but it's like to plan in and around it's, you can't explain it to people but for what you get back out of it then versus I don't know I feel like if I spent all my time and energy on like TikTok or Instagram and really like getting on top of actually learning how to make really good reels and really good TikToks and condensing a lot like taking if I took like a lot of videos of mine and condensed them like when I I had the habit habits I formed in my 20s series if I like turned them into like really good interesting to watch TikToks like I think I could do quite well on those platforms but I don't want I don't really want to and I'm the same I and I did I started a TikTok like before my last book came out and then I found out I was pregnant and I was really sick and then I was just wasn't really reading anymore and have or having time to read I was like like, I just, I don't know. And and so I'm, I don't, I'm at a very funny place with YouTube at the moment and um, where I want to keep doing it, but I don't really want to do it as a job. See, that's... Def- I want it to be a hobby again, but yeah. it's my job, you know? Not everyone loves their job all the time, so... Like, if we both put all the time and energy we put into making YouTube videos into TikToks, we'd have a much bigger audience. Yeah. But YouTube is my favourite place. Yeah, it's our place. home. And it's, I'm yeah, it feels here. like my home. And I just can't Bloody. make the move. Like, I don't want to make the move. But it's very hard to do both. <laughs> yeah, no, you, 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 no, yeah, we don't do both. We do, we do... We we're do, YouTubers. We do Instagram and we do a bit of this and a bit of that, but we do them all shit, I think, because we're not putting our... F- all right, all right, all right, speak for yourself. You're going to attack me like that. I don't no. need it. I mean, you know, we don't post often. Like, yeah. You were even saying to me recently, you hadn't posted on Instagram in weeks. Yeah. You know, way too long. We're but shit that's at it. balancing... It's like when you're trying to you, put your you, all in... You, but you, you build it up to be this big deal then, and then you're scared to post something because you're like, it's been the too long. I have to come back with something really interesting, but like, you know... Like a shit selfie. Oh yeah, there's just oh, there's just so much. There's a lot of pressure on it, and like yeah, it's something that I don't want to let it go. And it is, it has been an incredible job, and and it's still you know paying all my bills, and I'm still like earning money from it somehow. Brands will say like you know, a smaller YouTube following that are like really dedicated and will watch a big chunk of your video are far more valuable to them than if you're getting Why millions of views though? on a short it's because i don't know it's because like on youtube you've got more scope for a sponsorship i suppose and I, like i hate sponsored tiktoks like and they're just oh. not and i don't know there's i've not really found many people on tiktok that i i'm like oh i'm really interested in you as a person and and your content it's just that specific TikTok I like. Do you know what it is with you know? TikTok that I find? Because I'm the same with that. Is when you go onto someone's TikTok, you don't really know what they're doing. Like on YouTube, you can have an overview the, of yeah. what their videos are, the titles, thumbnails. But TikTok, it's just like so many videos. It's so overwhelming. And like you have to scroll through a bunch of them to be like, okay, this is what they do. But then a lot of people will just throw random things in. in. And yeah. it's just like, so what do you do here? I know. Whereas it's a lot, but I, but, but I, I, what do I do? I don't know. My thing has changed. My thing, I don't have a thing. But I like my thing, has, a thing. <laughs> my thing has changed so many times. As in, when I say thing, I mean like what I actually care about the most, talking about the most at that point in my life. If, if I was in college, if I was really into makeup, when I was single, bit of fucking. Oh, I had a baby, and like I got married. There's just. Yeah, it's whatever's going on is what I want to Lifestyle. talk. Lifestyle. Yes. You're bringing them along on the journey, on the of, your journey life. of your life. That's what we do. I know, but then that's not like, it's, it's, you're less likely to follow someone. If they when, don't have a niche. Yeah, if they don't have a niche. And I'm the same. On Instagram, like I'll follow someone if I'm like, oh, they post like body confidence stuff or they post, yeah. uh, you know, funny stuff about parenting. 
But you're so confined um, then, because like yeah. me as a person, I have so many interests and so many things I like talking about. I wouldn't be able to just make one kind of I know. content. I'd lose my mind because. But you do know. you not find that because it's not focused, you sometimes almost don't know where to start? Well, yeah, you don't know what so people many... want to watch. It should, and be... what you want to make. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like there's so, such a, a range of things I want to make. Yeah, and it's like which one do I want to put my focus on? But then it's like imagine. So you love horse riding, right? And it's yeah. like imagine if you made a whole vlog about horse riding, but your your brain would be like, oh no, one will watch that. Like mm. I have that a lot with like certain interests, and I'm like, I want to make a whole video about this thing. Probably get two thousand. Like the anxiety <laughs> one I did. I know, I know. <laughs> Is there any other career aside from YouTube that you can see yourself going in down the line? And do you ever think that you will fully leave YouTube? I don't think I'll ever fully leave YouTube, but I, I probably definitely will stop doing it in a professional capacity. But I don't I don't know. I say that, and then it's very hard then when some brand that you already love comes and waves money in front of you and is like, do you want to work together? And it's like, okay, because I, I already buy your shit. So like, you know, you want to... Well, there's loads of things I'd love to do. Like I, I'd love to do, even like when that guy, some... TV producer called a little while ago and he was like on about some program about me doing and he was asking me if I'd be interested in like doing main bits on TV and I never used to be interested in that because I used to travel all the time but now I don't yeah. travel that much because obviously I have a toddler and I'm, I'm pregnant again and I, I just I'm a real homebird since COVID I've just become less I don't know I always want to be in my like safe space and um, it's weird like I love you're turning into me no I, I want to reverse <laughs> it because I really want to do a lot of traveling in my 40s 50s yeah. yeah right now I'm very much happy to like be here and focusing on the house and stuff but, so like I don't know I would do stuff like that like like in TV, I, I always want to write. I don't think that would be a career for like another 20 years. It takes a long time yeah. to build build that up. Uh, I'd like to do lecturing. I would do a lot more consulting stuff. Like I've dabbled in that. Sometimes I genuinely just want like a really normal job. Nine like to five in the shop. Yeah, well not nine to five, like part time. Yeah, yeah, like a normal, normal, Melanie repetitive might job. Mel might be selling your your milk one day. <laughs> Thomas does this. My husband, he like when he sees like I don't know a bin man or like a someone doing like a job that is, is just such an almost undervalued job. Like it's such an important job. Yeah. Imagine if those people weren't doing those things. Like the people who fix the roads and yeah. the people who just keep our lives going that we don't think about them like he's always like I just wonder what it would be like doing that job like sometimes and the two of us always get really like oh I wonder what it'd be like to live in that house or like work in that shop or um, so, and I do have that like feeling that I don't know, there's a few jobs I'd like to do in my life yeah there's a lot of like jobs in charity and like there's there's a lot of jobs I'd be interested in doing but oh, I'm, I'm very charity. stuck in my little comfortable rut yeah <laughs> I am because it's a comfortable job that I can adapt like I you can know what fit to expect around. I know what to yeah. do a lot of other people like wouldn't have a fucking clue where to start with what we're doing yeah. like with the editing or with the because you put all the time and energy into it for them years to get yeah. you to the point you're at now in a long time we've been here what about you? I'm the same. Like, there's definitely a couple of things, like, I've said online a lot of times. Like, my ultimate dream job would be to be a therapist of some mm. sort. Um, and my biggest thing is that I get the most fulfillment out of helping people. And that's mm. why I feel like I get that with YouTube. Like, you know, in yeah. a Because I do a lot of, like, advice videos and kind of talking about my experience, things that help me. Like that anxiety video, like, I'm sharing things that... I genuinely feel like we'll help people through learning myself and through things mm. I've seen and you know error mistakes whatever. I've been the same with YouTube it's a very rewarding job in that sense when like people t the tell you you've messages. helped me yeah. or you know this thing changed my life in this way like it's absolutely mind-blowing you can't even comprehend it like so the the pro the pros definitely outweigh the negatives and um, obviously I worked in a shop for five years um, before I started YouTube mm. and I was still working it alongside YouTube for about a year and a half I think yeah. what, until I gave it up and going from that into this and having that aspect of helping people I wouldn't be able to ever not have that in a job yeah. so I definitely I can't see myself ever not doing YouTube even if I had a thousand views 
I would still do it as a hobby, like I think hundred percent because I love it. It's not about anything else. Having your own little community is so it's fast. so special, like, it's so lovely. Like they genuinely feel like my bestest friends. But that's actually another job that I would be interested in doing is like charity because again you're helping people. Yeah, yeah. I also would really want to do a lot of volunteering over the next number of years for like animal shelters, homeless shelters, like food kitchens, like yeah. stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I feel like my line of work I'll always wanted to be on that trajectory yeah, yeah that kind of route but yeah it's a tricky one because i just can't imagine not doing this oh, like it's a lot of people are leaving i keep seeing so people many leaving people have left who do you love watching who's like gone and you're really sad that they're gone like even certain yeah. people that like i know and i'm friends with like i've just sl- like silently slowly stepped away a lot of them then and I'm like oh my god are just on Instagram now as well yeah, and yeah. I'm just like come back cause like I don't get <laughs> the back. same from a story as I do from like sitting no. with you cause like this feels so much more personal you yeah. know like you're having a conversation with me <laughs> yeah. so I don't know yeah chat to us down below it was lovely to see yeah, us let again. Us know your thoughts. We're gonna react to some of your assumptions about us On now. Channel. My channel. So I'll leave that link down below. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I love you so very much. And we'll see you super soon. Bye. What was that?